So when we travel on these trips, we usually have a support vehicle behind us with camera gear, a drone, things like that. Well, yesterday, uh, as they say in the UK, we had a mishap. Uh, fortunately, not with this car, but with the van, uh, one of the drivers of it, an American, uh, was trying to get out of the way of an emergency vehicle, hit a curb and knocked out two tires, blew the tires out and bent the rims. So that kind of screwed up the day. That vehicle was stuck on the side of the road for the day. So uh, <clears throat> we're Ubering around now with a second vehicle until the other one gets fixed. This vehicle <clears throat> belongs to a gentleman named Cliff Ryan, who lives here in the UK, in Watford. And I happen to know Cliff because he races in the States occasionally with a Mustang and I race a Corvette and we race really hard against each other and have become good friends as a result of that. And so we're going over his house. He's he loaned me this car. What a, what a great guy. Uh, he's got several cars, but really his one car in particular and it's his son's, Sam Ryan. And we're gonna look at his son's car. And it's, it's quite a quite a story attached to that car. So I haven't seen it. I'll see it at the same time you do. I'm with my good friends, uh, the Ryans, Sam and Cliff, who I usually see on the other side of the pond at Lime Rock Park in Connecticut, where Cliff races a Mustang and I race a Corvette. And uh, I don't know, have you ever beaten me? I don't think so. <laughs> you know what, it's been so often I can't remember how many times. That's true. Anyway, it's been Cliff's uh, you know, very nice uh, offer to use his car this week, Cliff, could you just tell quickly what I'm what I'm driving here? This this is a Jaguar XJS, but it was actually produced by Jaguar Sports, who are a joint venture between TWR, Tom Walkinshaw Racing, and Jaguar. And it was brought out to commemorate Jaguar winning Le Mans, and it's got a detuned version of the Le Mans winning engine in it. So it has Cosworth pistons, steel billet crank, and a Zytec fuel system. Hmm. I could bore you for hours about it, but. That's it in a nutshell. And that's an original paint car. That's the original paint car. The only thing that's been painted is the, is the body kit uh -huh. because, you know, it gets, it gets damaged. Yeah. But and you have a racing version of this. I have this. a racing version of this in the garage. Yes. Okay, let's take a look just quickly at those. Okay, well, we have a red car here too. So that's the racing version of the one we just drove here. Tucked away in the corner because it's not used very often. Is that right? How yeah. many times a year? Only a couple of times a year at the moment. I used to campaign, I used to do full championships, but I, I don't do it anymore. I cherry pick. Now, what about this This, this is Triumph. a 1976 Triumph Stag, all original, apart from slightly different color paint. I bought it in 1983, used it for my first holiday with my wife, and we used it for our wedding. It's not going anywhere, ever. 83, so you've had it 37 years. 37 years. Isn't that something, man? Runs yeah. well? Runs well. And that's got a strange little V8, right? It's a, it's a unique V8 that's only in this car. Um, there are rumors that it was two four cylinders joined together, but it never featured in any other car. And they used to have lots of problems with overheating because the stand wasn't taken out of the galleys when they, when they cast it. Got it. All right, well, we're not here to talk about these cars. We're here to talk about Sam's car. Yeah. And I have not even seen it yet in the other garage. That's so let's go. Garage. Well, this will be my car when... <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> I asked when I was younger. Sam, guide us to your car. Uh, my car is this way in the other garage. Yep. There we go. So you get the full... Oh, nicely covered. And here we are. Wow, that's exceptional. Wow, this is an A35? Austin A35. Austin A35. So this is like the the, the cousin to a Morris Minor, I'd say. Would Correct. You say? Yeah. Huh, interesting. You can see right here, Austin of England. So you've had this for how long? Since 2007, so. And what inspired you to own a car like this? Because Dad had a racing car, which was an Austin A35, and the car was here and I was driving it around the driveway and I just fell in love with it. Really? The race car around the driveway? Yeah, well, it was a car before a race car. <laughs> okay, it, was, okay. it was converted into a race okay. car and we were on holiday in Jamaica and Dad was doing some research <laughs> online and he found an Austin A35. In Jamaica? No, in the UK. Okay, okay. So, but whilst we were on holiday, he had a look. We, uh, Dad bought it online and came home, picked it up. And 
Did it look like this? No, it didn't look like this. We brought it home and unfortunately, 2007, I fell ill with a brain tumour, cancerous. So there was a charity uh, at the hospital where one of the nurses approached me and she said, there's a charity called Rays of Sunshine, which offer cancer patients wishes. So you have a list of three that you would like to have and the top one was A35 and then the other two I can't even remember what they were because they weren't important so yeah. so that was your not to meet Miss, no, Mick Jagger no, or anything like that? No it was like me, do you want to meet uh, Beckham or uh, a celebrity of some sort or go away on no I don't want to have my car restored and really, to original condition. So who restored it? Volunteers? It was an anonymous person so but it was in London it went to a car garage and they stripped it back and they completely re-sprayed the whole thing. They welded all the holes and they re-chromed a lot and so, we, new interior, new interior new brand new interior. Mm -hmm. And I actually bought a few of these pieces here mm -hmm. because when we originally bought it, they didn't have the original mm -hmm. mirrors on. So um, they sort of took that off and then put it back on it's again. It's a beautiful car. Are you satisfied? Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, yes. Pop, how about, how about, how about you? Are, you? are you a chip off the old block here? Yeah, absolutely. He, he's uh, in every way. I mean, he restores furniture. He, likes old, he just likes old so, things. It's all about you antiques <laughs> and <laughs> restoring yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. sort of keeping the heritage. Wow. So you're not going to modify this ring? Is oh, no, no, no. No, they, they said to me when I made the wish for my car to be restored, they said, do you want it on the MTV program, the American program, Pimp My Ride, where they put speakers in the car and they put all this bling paint work on it and stripes down the side and what, God knows what. It, so, And I said, no, I don't want that just exactly how it was originally. I, I love the respect you have for, for old things. That's really terrific. And they said, are you sure you don't want speakers in the back or <laughs> something like that? And I was like, no, I don't even want seatbelts. It didn't come with seatbelts. So, I mean, were you surprised when he chose the car over celebrities? No, <laughs> to be Is perfectly you, honest with you. you know, I knew, just... yeah, I knew what he was like that he loved. I mean, we'd, we'd bought it for him to restore. Mm -hmm. And him, him and a friend of his were restoring it in this garage and when, when unfortunately he was taken ill, mm. you see. Yeah. So we have got photos of him and yeah. his friend underneath it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like when it wasn't is. looking quite as, well, in a photo it doesn't look that bad, you know, pictures right, right, make right. things look a lot better. Everybody looks at it and the kids will say, Daddy, Daddy, what's that? Look at that. As we're driving past and it just makes me smile. Isn't that nice? That it really does take effect yep. and it is such a lovely piece that people do appreciate it. Okay, well, Sam, thanks. This has been a great stop. And I love Thank you, you for uh, coming and having a look at... Well, I'm going to come next time in the summer because I want to ride. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Take you up on we'll that. be pushing it across the road for it to get started. <laughs> so we just left Cliff's house and we're following Cliff right now to his friend Gary's. Gary is a Jaguar specialist and runs a Jaguar repair, restoration, parts center. And it'll look mo more like uh, an American yard of barn fine cars than we've seen so far here in, in England. Cliff's friend Gary, they've, they've been longtime mates and uh, they've raced together. And Gary has a, a Jaguar specialty shop. Mostly they work on race cars. And so this is an MGB. Tell us what we're looking at here. Uh, this is one of the oldest uh, MGB still racing. Um, this belongs to a guy called Paul Latimer. Um, he's, he's had the car now for some time. I used to run the car with Cliff and the original owner, a guy called Rod Longton, who unfortunately is no longer with us. Uh, a nicer guy you couldn't wish to meet. Mm. Um, but yeah, Rod, Rod ran it for, well, he ran MGs for over 50 years. 50 years. So th you've raced this, you guys have raced this? We've raced this at Spa in the six hour race, probably half a dozen, if not oh, more God, times. Yeah. <laughs> all, all of these times on the wing yeah, here. That's all there, so you can the, count all, them. You can do whatever you want. There's all, all the original <laughs> yeah. stickers for the, for the Spa uh, six hour there. We did the Le Mans Classic in it. 
and I've done the Targo Florio historic in it, and it's and it's just it's been campaigned. And as a mark of respect to Rod, his name's still, his on, name's the side. still on the side of the car. Oh, isn't that nice? So, what kind of business do you have? Really, it started out just as a, I had a garage with my father back in Dagenham, uh, 20, 30 years ago, um, and then I moved in with a friend doing some some spare parts for Jaguars. And then when I packed up there, I just decided to do a few bits and pieces for my, myself. The, the race cars really took over more than anything. And uh, it's a good thing. People are happy to spend money on race cars. So are you mostly a race they, prep shop? Mostly, but there's, there's also a lot of restoration stuff as well. I'll take on anything Jaguar, that's for sure, up until a point. XJSs and before. I get it. Okay. Shoot. Well, can we walk around and look at some of your projects? Absolutely. Whatever? Well, tell us about this Jag right here. Strangely enough, this one came in from the States as a pretty poor car, mm -hmm. um, and it, it went through a few hands. I purchased it for a friend of mine, um, and when I got it back and stripped it down, I, I thought I'd done him a lot of harm, to be honest. The, the car really wasn't that nice. It but was a street it, car. It was a street car, yeah. But in the time it took to actually get the thing repaired and together, um, the value was back in the car. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a very good buy. Uh -huh. um, he lost his way with it a little bit and somebody else took over, another friend of mine. He had it for a short period and same deal, he sort of lost his way with it somewhat. But this engine here um, is for a race car that's just outside the door. Ah. Um, I've just finished building that, that's ready to drop into the hole. It was an XJ? This is an XJ, this is a six cylinder XJS. This is actually, the car is a, um, no actually that car is a four litre, so this is a four litre engine. Mm -hmm. Wander outside? Sure. Please. Oh, so this is the race car that motor. This is the race car, uh -huh. yeah. This belongs to a guy called Simon Dumford, who is uh, classic Jaguar racing. Mm -hmm. um, he makes aluminium panels and bits and pieces for E-types. So these cars are all, and all 80s? The way things have gone, uh, we started a series some time ago, a friend of mine and myself, um, just for XJSs. Subsequently, it, it got into XJ6s as well, and now they're diversifying further with there's S types, and, yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of bits and pieces out there, but this was primarily. These were cheap to buy at one time. We could we could pick one up for five hundred pound at the side of the road and stick a seat in it and go racing. That and was it, that was the fun of it. It's but given them a new life, I guess. It, yeah. To a degree, but yeah. it's got to the point now where they're more more valuable than than just picking them up and going racing. Another racing XJS. Yep. Um, it seems that I've got probably half of the grid in the garden at the moment. <laughs> This belongs to a friend of mine, Colin Ginn, who, he's my panel man. He, he does an awful lot of panel work for me and, and a, a better panel man you couldn't find. But he wants me to remove the engine and gearbox for him so that he can restore the body. It's a Mark II? This is a Mark II, yeah. 3.8 Mark II. With a manual? It's actually auto, but we will be converting it to manual. And will that be a race car? No, that's going to be his own road car. It's just that it, it's a very sound car that just obviously had a bad paint at some time in its life. There's a the biggest pile of MG spares under those bonnets there. That's that's all MG parts, MG midget mainly. Is that a C nose? That's a C type bonnet, yeah. Whoa, what's the story with that? Oh, it's fiberglass. It's a fiberglass one, yeah. It's, okay. It's a kit. Oh wow. And you have the rest of the car? This is a fiberglass. Uh, yeah, the rest of the car actually is with my friend Colin, who actually has it in mind to build an aluminium copy from the fiberglass mold. No kidding. Yeah. Use that as a kind of use that as a buck. Yeah, wow. Hmm. So, so this this is a, a, a Ford Escort Mexico Mark One that my son races, and unfortunately, last time he was out at Brands Hatch, he had a little coming together. So uh, Gary is it's here for Gary to repair. That was you saw the engine and gearbox. Oh yeah, sitting in the workshop. Daniel doesn't believe in doing anything by half, obviously. Yeah. So you're going to chop the nose off on this? It's going to have a complete front end, yeah. Yeah. So what's just the history with this car? I bought this when he was 18, so 12 years ago, because he didn't like the A35 that we used to race. He wanted a Mark I Escort. We bought it. We didn't know it was a genuine Mexico, but it turned out that it was a genuine Mexico. Which means it was a factory race car. No, the Mexico was a... a tribute to the London to Mexico road rally winning cars. Okay, okay. And it was a certain spec that you had, it's an export shell. And it was, it's, yeah, they, they call it AVO. 
uh, an AVO shell. Which and, is near and, here. And the AVO shell, actually, if you go to the end of the garden, it's the old factory is just at the end of the garden. Yeah, seriously, yeah. So this is a 1300 cc? 1600. 1600, okay. Crossflow, Kent Crossflow. Okay. So this was a streetcar, and did it you? It was a streetcar. I bought it as an unfinished restoration project because it didn't have. It, it was a. It was a twenty footer. Uh huh. Yeah. This paintwork, you know, it's not very good close up, but from twenty foot, which is what you see when you're on a race circuit, it looks fine. You're fine. Yeah. And Gary, right, so. Gary turned it. That's that's my son. He's the driver. He's the driver. This is you. That's me. And you write the checks. <laughs> I write the checks. And there's Gary, and he's the, the wrench. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's an old friend of ours, it seems. I mean, <laughs> South Bend, Indiana, somehow came from South Bend to uh, the UK. What's the story with this car? There's another guy local to here um, that rebuilds Jaguars. We've, all, we've been friends for a long, long time. Unfortunately, he passed away a little while ago, and he left this to his son. Um, his son was having some building work done and asked me to store it for a while. How many years ago? For a couple of weeks, some three years ago. Yeah. Um, I have been in touch with him recently to see what he's going to do with the thing, but it's actually quite sound as a, as a car, and the engine and everything is in the boot. So does this interest you at all, or no? I mean, could this not, be a racer here? Not in the slightest. Yeah, there is one Strangely enough, races, yeah, yes. it won Goodwood yeah, this yeah, year, yeah, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the Lark? I or don't know one of these? what it was. No, no it, was it was a Golden was, Hawk. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was a Golden Hawk. We in Goodwood? Yeah. yeah. So Cliff, tell us about this car back here. This is one of the A35s that Gary and I bought when building a race car, which I think wasn't good enough. And so Gary gave it to Sam and then it wasn't good enough yeah, I think because it was just gone too far. When well, we I mean, got into see, it, we found it's got fiberglass, fiberglass front wings. wings and everything. So, um, that, so this so is it, this is the one he had before the one you've yep, just yep, seen. Yep, yep. And you determined it was just too. It rotten. was just too rotten. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we we bought another one, which ended up to be the race car, and it cost us fifty pounds of eBay for the shell. For a shell, and it and it was a beautiful shell. Oh, so we thought until we had it dipped. Yeah, we had it dipped, and then Gary spent a couple of weeks yep. just just a, just yeah. a couple of weeks That's welding. Great it. word that just. And these are pretty much parts cars or what over here? Yeah, the, the S-Type was um, someone building a Mark 1 Jaguar. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw, I did see one of your programs recently where you was looking at an S-Type and thought it was a Mark 2. What's the difference? I'm not Tell gonna me. Put, I'm not going to put you right. If you look at an S-Type, it's got what we call it like an eyebrow above the headlight. Okay. So if you're looking at it from the front, yep. the side lights on a Mark II are on the tops of the wings. And a proper early Mark II would this have eyebrow. would have a double bumper. Okay, so this means S type. Where, where were they? What was early? What was later? Were they simultaneous? Well, they were made together um, at the end, um, but the Mark II became the 240 and the 340, which did have the same bumper, um, and the S type. Was, it was the, it's got a longer boot on it, it's got independent rear suspension. And I mean, in truth, all round, it's a better car. Okay. But everybody loves the Mark II more. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, in reality, the what? S Type is a better car. Are there, are there more Mark IIs? I think the, the Mark II over here in particular has a, a little bit of a connection with being a bit of a rogue. What does that mean? Bank robber's car. Bank robber's car. <laughs> So this is a, a Ford, what is that? It's a Mark V Cortina, um, but it's quite a rare car because it, it is actually only a two-door. My friend that owns it tells me that there's, there's only about half of a dozen left of them in the, in the world now. I'll, I'll take that with a little pinch of salt. There's probably more out there hiding somewhere, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it wow. is a very rare car. And is that a overhead cam four-cylinder? Yes. Like a 2300? It's a, yeah, it's a Pinto engine. It's, the, um, it's a two-litre Pinto. So this, this, this is one of mine. It is. That was my daily driver. For the first two and a half years of its life, it was used by the Queen. It was registered to Jaguar cars, and the Queen used it for driving to and from Sandringham or places like that, I suppose. And I bought it because it's one of the last Series 3 V12s. And uh, it came here for some body work a few years ago. And life and time happens, and it's just sitting here. So is your intention to restore it? Yeah. No kidding. The Queen. Did she actually drive it or was she yes, driven? Yes, no, she actually drove she it. Actually... She always had two of these. Jaguar would be servicing one 
while she's driving the other, and they would swap them over. They called them twins. And I found out because I, I took it back to the supplying dealer and the guy recognised the registration number. And whilst he wouldn't give it to me in writing, he said they had a file this thick. Now that dealer doesn't exist anymore, so... Are you second owner? Third. Well, thank you, sir. This has been, this has been, been wonderful. Really, really appreciate it. And nice to meet you. Thanks for in introducing okay. us. This is really cool. Hey, we're going to go hit a pub now. <laughs> <laughs> but to you, no. happy hunting. Tea total. <laughs> hey, I'll make up for it. <laughs> and the Subaru, is this really a rally car or just the decals? Just the decals, yeah. OK. You say decals? Yes. We say it properly. Why do you guys... <laughs> Do you do this on purpose to piss us off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, is it working? Because if it's not, we if thought not you were doing it for us. <laughs> no, I was saying Mazda the other day, and you say what? Mazda. 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 Yeah. And it's not a Miata either, is it? It's an <laughs> MX-5. <laughs> what do you say instead of Miata? It's, it's an, an MX-5. That's what they call it. Oh, yeah, they kind of are now in the states as well.